normal looking photos with disturbing backstories. One morning in 1954, a photographer for the Los Angeles Times named John Gaunt was in the front yard of his beachfront home when he heard a neighbor yelling that there's something happening on the beach. He thought it would be something interesting for the newspaper so he grabbed his camera and took this photo. But unfortunately, it turned out that this couple's 19 month old son, who was playing in their front yard, wandered off into the beach then vanished into the water where they never found him. When you first look at this photo, it just looks like a normal high school picture. But if you look in the top left corner, you can see a man named Eric Harris and his friends pointing pretend guns at the camera. Just a few weeks after this photo was taken, Eric and one of his friends shot 12 students and one teacher. This photo was taken at a nightclub, but shortly after it caught on fire from fireworks and 100 people passed away. What's the first thing you see in this image? The first thing I saw was a skull, but the more I looked at it, the more I could see two ladies at a table. But it's actually neither one of them. It's actually a lady sitting at a table looking into a mirror. You can only subscribe if you knew that before I told you. The most shocking moments caught on live streams. This Twitch streamer who goes by Mr. Big got the police called on him for a noise complaint. But when the police came to his door, he refused to give them any information, so he was arrested. It was all captured on his live stream, but that wasn't even the most crazy part. A few minutes later, one of his neighbors comes in and starts stealing things from him. Here's why the richest man in the world lives in a $50,000 house. I'm sure most of you know this, but the richest person in the world is Elon Musk with a net worth of around $237 billion. He used to own 8 mansions, but he went on a selling spree and sold 7 of them. He put his last house on the market for $37.5 million, but he later took it down and I'll explain why in a couple seconds. He did all of this so he could move himself and his Tesla headquarters to Texas, which has no personal income tax. Since Los Angeles, where he was living, has the highest level of income tax, he said by moving his business to Texas, he would save $2.5 billion per year. In Boca Chica, Texas is where Elon's other company called SpaceX is located. There's plenty of beautiful mansions within a 30 minute drive of the facility, but instead he decided to buy a $50,000 portable house so he could stay at SpaceX 24-7. But like I said, he still has a mansion in San Francisco, but he only stays there when he's attending events in California. This evil dad cut off his daughter's hair without her permission. The girl's name is Kelsey and her parents couldn't do anything together without arguing. So they eventually got a divorce and a little while later her dad married one of his co-workers, which made Kelsey closer to her mother. She would always tell her mother how much she liked her friend's hair highlights. So the day before her birthday, her mom booked her a hair appointment to get highlights as well. She was so happy, but then the next day came around. She got the blonde highlights, then she went to her father's house. He was so angry because she changed her hair without asking him first. Her stepmom said that she deserved a punishment then grabbed scissors and gave them to her dad. He then started cutting off all of her hair. She started crying then stayed in her room for the next two days until her mom picked her up. Her mom was furious then took these pictures and posted them on Facebook calling out her ex-husband. A local hairdresser saw the post and told her she would make her a custom wig. An investigation then took place and her dad and stepmom were arrested. This teacher stopped for a boy riding his bike in the middle of the highway which ended up saving his dad's life. One day, Keller Sutherland was driving home from work when she seen a boy biking in and out of traffic on the highway. She was worried for the boy so she turned around and went to talk to him. When she rolled down her window, she realized that she knew the boy. It was 7-year-old Cameron Simonkick who was a former student of hers. The boy rushed over to her and burst out in tears. Then she told him to get in the car and explain why he was upset. Cameron said that when he got home from school, he saw his dad lying on the ground unconscious. He tried calling 911 but he couldn't get on his dad's phone because he didn't know the password. So he went to his neighbor's house but they weren't home. The only other thing he could think of was to bike to his grandma's house. But luckily the teacher found him then dialed 911 and gave the phone to him so he could tell the police where to go. Apparently Cameron's father is diabetic. As soon as Cameron and the teacher arrived back at his house, the paramedics were there giving insulin to his dad. Around 30 minutes later he was feeling better and it was all because of the teacher. 
Here's how El Chapo escaped prison. If you don't know who he is, El Chapo was a drug lord with a net worth of around two to four billion dollars. He was sentenced to 20 years in jail for murder and drug trafficking. He was placed in one of Mexico's top security prisons, but he managed to escape. In this footage from the 24-hour security camera in his cell, you can see him take off his slippers and go over to a shower and disappear. They later found out that under the shower was a hole that led to a tunnel, but since it was behind the shower, the camera couldn't see it. Inside the tunnel was a minecart that was built with a motorcycle so he could escape escape quickly. On the other side of the tunnel was this house that was only used to cover it up so no one would know that it was there. People who survived the impossible. In 2011, while bungee jumping on the Zambezi River in Zambia, Erin Langworthy suffered an accident that almost cost her her life. Right when she jumped, her bungee cord broke, which caused her to fall all the way into the river where she fought for her life for 40 minutes. Luckily, she only suffered bruises and a broken collarbone. Cecilia Seacan was the only survivor of Northwest Airlines Flight 255 in 1987. Only half a mile away from the airport, the plane crashed due to a mechanical malfunction in the left wing. The doctors said they couldn't give an explanation on how she survived, and she doesn't even remember what happened. She fractured some bones in her left leg and got burns on 30% of her body. This astronaut flew to space knowing he wouldn't survive. During the 1960s, the United States and the Soviet Union were in an intense competition to see whose spacecraft would take the lead on entering into space. By 1967, they had both successfully sent astronauts and spaceships into space, but they felt that it was time to push the boundaries and land on the moon. The US had attempted this, but after three deaths from astronauts, they gave up. The Soviet Union, on the other hand, wanted to be first because the leader at the time wanted to win the space race to increase his reputation as a ruler. So they made a spacecraft, but during the inspection, they found several technical issues. Vladimir Komarov was chosen to lead the spaceship. And even though he wasn't 100% sure about doing it, he didn't really have a choice because no one was brave enough to go against their ruler. And if he refused to go on the mission, he knew that one of his best friends would have to take his place. So he didn't want to be responsible if anything bad were to happen to him. As soon as he entered into space, the spaceship began spinning out of control. And after five hours, he hit the ground and unfortunately passed away. This old lady started yelling at a kid selling candy, then one man decided it was enough. Two siblings from California decided they wanted to earn more money. So they thought of a few ideas, but they decided on a candy business. They decided that they were each gonna buy a box of candy, then sell them outside their local grocery store. On some days, they would sell a ton of candy, but on others, they would only sell one or two pieces. Everything was going well for them until one day when an old lady approached them. She became very aggressive and started yelling at them for no reason. The kids went silent and didn't say a word while the lady embarrassed them in front of the store. As she was yelling, a man overheard her and decided that it was enough. He walked over to them and what he ended up doing made the lady's jaw drop. But before I tell you what he did, I found this app that tells you your celebrity look like, and apparently I look like Zach King. If you want to find out who you look like, just press a button on my profile. He ended up telling the lady that she had no right to be yelling at the kids like that, and he also told the kids that he would buy an entire box of candy and handed them $100. This little girl got hit by a baseball going 105 miles per hour. Todd Fraser hit a foul ball into the stands which hit a toddler in the face. All the players were worried for the girl and some couldn't even look at her. Some of the players were in tears and some of them were praying. She was then rushed to the hospital and here's what some of the players had to say. No, I have uh, two kids under three years old and just hope she's alright. Every stadium needs to have nets. That's it. I don't care about the view of a fan or what. It's all about safety. And I still have a knot in my stomach. Major League Baseball requires to have net in the green area, but they don't require any in the red areas, which is where the girl got hit. This girl got messages from her stalker every night and you won't believe what happened when she figured out what they meant. One night, when 17-year-old Tana was babysitting, she heard a knock on the door so she figured it was just the parents coming home early. But when she looked out the window, she saw a creepy old man so she decided not to open it. Fast forward almost a year later when she was working at her new job at Subway, the old man walked in. He sat down and stared at the girl for two hours. Then a few days later, she started receiving one-word text messages from unknown numbers. One night when she was working, her manager left to run some errands so she was there 
there by herself. And that's when the old man walked in. A few seconds later, she got another one word text message. Then the old man told her to look at her phone. Tana decided to run to the back of the store and lock the door. And that's when she realized all the text messages put together read, I will make you pay. Right when she decided to dial 911, the old man started banging on the door. She decided to run out the back door and make a run for her car. But by the time she got to the front of the store, thankfully the police had already arrived. But the scariest part is they found the old man sitting in the back of her unlocked car. Shocking food tricks and commercials that you didn't know about. Believe it or not, most companies have a food stylist. Their job is to make the product look as good as possible. For example, the stylist from McDonald's places the ingredients, then grabs a hot metal object and melts the cheese. Then he uses a syringe to shape the mustard and ketchup, but only on the side that they're taking the picture on. But after they take the photo, it's still not done yet. They then go on the computer and boost all the colors to pop more. They also tidy up the placement of the ingredients, and here's what the final result looks like compared to the actual burger. In commercial, Commercials, TV shows, and movies, they don't use real ice. They use fake ice made out of silicone rubber. This gives the photographers and videographers more time since the ice doesn't melt. But there's also two more reasons. The first one is that it just looks better. And lastly, the fake ice cubes don't make any noise, which is good for movies and TV shows where people are talking and you need to hear what they're saying. If you see an Apple AirTag that isn't yours, call the police immediately. If you don't know what it is, it's a small tracker made by Apple that's meant to be put on keys, wallets, backpacks, or whatever you don't want to lose. So if you do lose them, your phone will tell you where it is. But one man put an AirTag in a girl's jacket without her knowing. She said she took off her jacket at a restaurant and that's when it happened. It tracked her go from one restaurant to another and even while she was walking home alone. Luckily, Apple has a safety feature that notifies you if an AirTag that isn't yours is tracking you. So she was able to find it and throw it away, but that that isn't always the case. This lady was followed from the mall to her house. And again, she got a notification that told her that, but she couldn't find it. She figured it had to be somewhere on her car, so she brought it to a shop and mechanics looked it over. But they said that they couldn't find it, so be safe. This picture is not what you think it is. At first, it looks like a fish on a plate, but if you tilt your head to the side, it's actually a lady. The dumbest criminals caught on camera. This guy from Queensland, Australia was trying to steal an ATM. He attached a chain to the back of a truck that he had stolen, then grabbed a hammer and smashed the glass door open. He then went inside and tied the chain to the ATM. He got back in the truck then drove away but he didn't realize that the chain had become unhooked. So a few minutes later, what did he do? He showed up to try again. But this time, he realized his chain was too short, so he gave up and left with nothing. The scariest things caught on live TV. During a live news broadcast in Hungary, one of the guy's glass of water moved on its own. They were both stunned, but they played it off like nothing had happened and continued the show. In Peru, these hosts were with a crowd of people at a beach that's known for UFO sightings. The broadcasters didn't think that they would see anything, but then everybody noticed an object in the sky. They all started pointing their laser pointers at it, and it seemed to respond. Now before I show you the craziest one, I found this fun word game that has three different game modes. But my favorite is the one where it gives you a word, then you have to guess a word related to that word, then another word related to that word, and so on. And you can get it by pressing the button on my profile. Finally, after an interview, this UK politician was holding a red binder. But when he walked past this vehicle, it changed to green. This fast food worker heard yelling in a car then instantly jumped into action. 19 year old Logan Simmons was a manager at Chick-fil-A. One day he was working in the kitchen getting ready for dinner rush when a lady pulled up to the drive through window. But he noticed something was off. He saw the lady having a conversation with someone in the back seat but the conversation looked unusual. It turned out there was a toddler in the back seat but his seatbelt had locked on him and he was having a hard time breathing. Every time he tried to get out the seatbelt would get tighter to his neck. Logan noticed that it was so tight to his neck that he was turning red and starting to lose consciousness. Consciousness. But the problem is, Logan was inside the restaurant with all the other employees. And by the time he ran out to the front door, it would have been too late. So he sprung into action and jumped out the drive through window. He then asked the mom for permission to do something crazy. She agreed, so he grabbed his pocket knife and cut the seatbelt. The toddler then started crying, and that's how Logan knew he could breathe again. Game show cheaters caught on live TV. Terry Nees perfectly guessed the price of a showcase on the TV show The Price is Right. 
He was the first person to ever guess the exact number in 38 years of the show. After studying the show for 4 months with his wife before going on it, they realized that every single price was in the exact same order on each show, so all they had to do was remember it. After making it all the way to the final round, Terry remembered that the showcase was around $23,000. He couldn't remember the last 3 numbers, but it didn't really matter. Because on the show, if you're close enough to the number, you still win. But he decided to fill in the last 3 numbers with his wedding date and his wife's birth month and it ended up being the exact price. After the show, he explained to the host how they memorized the pattern from each show. And after that, the show completely changed, so now all the prices are random to ensure that it doesn't happen again. But since Terry technically didn't break any of the rules, he got to keep the prize. This bouncy house flew away with three kids inside of it and you won't believe what happened to them. Johnny was a friendly man living in New York. One day he decided to set up a large bouncy house in his front yard for the neighborhood kids to enjoy. But when he was setting it up, he forgot to put in the stakes to hold it to the ground. And one day, three kids were playing inside the bouncy house when the wind began to pick up. And just when the kids were about to get off of it, it flew 50 feet up into the air. Johnny quickly ran outside and he saw it flying higher and farther away. A man in a nearby apartment saw it flying in the air so he called the police. The police then began chasing it hoping the wind would die down and they would land in the river. A few minutes later, the wind changed direction and they were headed straight towards an electric tower. One of the kids then fell out and landed on a parked car. But just as they began to lose hope, the wind started to die down and they started falling to the ground. When they got close enough to the ground, the other two kids jumped out onto the concrete. Luckily, all three kids survived with just scratches and bruises and Johnny was never charged. This lady called the police on a girl selling water and here's what the cops did. One day in the summer of 2018, it was really hot and humid and a girl named Jordan wanted to go to Disneyland. So she got the idea to sell water bottles and use the profit to go on her trip. Her mom stood by and watched to make sure everything was under control. She got plenty of customers since she was on the sidewalk that led to the San Francisco Giants game. But all of a sudden, an angry lady approached her. She said that she was trying to work across the street but there was too much noise. She also said that the girl was breaking the law by selling water without a permit. Jordan didn't pack up and leave so the lady got out her phone and called 911. Jordan's mom decided to start recording her and she posted it online where it went viral. The lady in the video later apologized on live television and said that she didn't actually call 911, she was only pretending to get the girl to move. But it was later revealed by the police that she actually did call 911 and overreacted. This dad told 911 that his baby choked on milk, but then they figured out what really happened. One day, this single mother asked her ex-husband if he could watch their child named Xavier while she went back to work for the first time since she had the baby. Her ex kept texting her all day about how annoying Xavier was being. She told him to just push through for the day, and she would find a babysitter for next time. Then at 2.30 in the afternoon, she got another text from him, saying that Xavier had stopped breathing because he had choked on milk, and that they were going to the hospital. She then packed up from work and rushed to the hospital too. The doctors did a CT scan and found out that Xavier was bleeding from inside his brain. Then she was shocked when the police arrived to do interviews. That night, the father was arrested for first degree child abuse. Xavier was in a coma for two weeks, and the doctors told his mom that he might be blind, he might not be able to move, and he might not be able to speak. Three months later, he so far wasn't diagnosed with anything, but to try and prevent anything bad from happening in the future, his mom started taking him to a bunch of different therapists. This guy had brain surgery while playing the guitar. Robert Alvarez loves playing the guitar, but one day he had to have surgery to get a brain tumor removed, and there was a chance that he would forget how to do some things. So the doctor asked him if he wanted to play his guitar during his surgery, because it would minimize the risk of impairing brain function like movement and speech, but for Robert, his ability to play the guitar was just as important to him. At first, he was a little hesitant because he liked to play heavy metal music, and he didn't know how the surgeons would feel about him playing that type of music, but he decided to go ahead with it, and he played Creep by Radioheads, which is one of the only songs he he knew that wasn't heavy metal. This man ordered pizza every day for 10 years until the employees noticed something was off. 48-year-old Kirk Alexander loves Domino Pizza so much that he orders it almost every single day. The general manager named Sarah said that he orders every day or every other day and all the employees know who he is. But one day, the staff noticed that he hadn't ordered in a few days, so they just figured he was on vacation. A few days later, the manager looked at when his last order was and it was 11 days ago. At this point, the manager knew something was off, so she sent one of her employees to check on him. When he got to Kirk's house, he noticed the lights were on, so he knocked on the door, but there is no answer. He decided to get out 
out his phone and he called them several times, but still there is no answer. At this point, he knew something was off, so he called 911 and explained the whole situation. When the paramedics got inside, they found out that he had suffered from a stroke. And they said if they were just one day later, he may not still be alive. 